The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Oh, no, we're not done with the winter yet. <laughs> if you put the blanket and the winter clothes away, you're going to need them over the next couple of days. Meteorologist Adam Kasky with a quick look at what to expect for the weekend. It's going to be below average, that's for sure, and get ready for a freeze tonight and then another light freeze tomorrow night. Let's get right to the current conditions out there because we're feeling the chill at 45 degrees, but we're going to see these temperatures drop quite a bit, a bit more through the evening. Now at 45 with the north wind at 21 gusting to 36, that's one of the headlines this afternoon and even through the first part of the night is going to be the gusty wind. Most recent wind gusts between 20 and 30 miles per hour, and it's going to stay that way at least through about two, three. 3 a.m. and then the wind will subside by sunrise tomorrow. So thankfully when we're at our coldest point tomorrow, there won't be much of a breeze. But you look at the readings now, 50 Pleasanton and Uvalde. Catula still hanging on to 58. That's the exception at the moment. Fredericksburg down to 39 degrees and you look closely 45 at Randolph Converse area, 51 Stinson and 41 Bernie. As we go through the evening, cool, breezy, feeling the chill out there. Temperatures in the upper 30s by 10 o'clock. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to have widespread 20s on the map. I mean, even Rio Medina about 22, Comfort 21, Seguin 27, and Floresville about 28. We're going to talk about when we warm up and how much warmer it's going to get in just a bit. All right, Adam, thank you. Hopes were really high uh, for the old Lone Star Brewery south of downtown, which would, would be trendy and popular as another old brewery, the Pearl, right near the Museum of Art. It was thought that Gray Street Partners could finally do what three other developers had not in 25 years since the Lone Star Brewery shut down. Still one of downtown's most successful developers, Gray Street Partners now says it wants to sell all or part of the property. So what do neighbors say about the ongoing saga? Jesse Degollado has the story. Hauling away what's been demolished of the old Lone Star Brewery is part of the first phase of its long awaited redevelopment. I'm proud that it's finally going to happen. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Now that the developer, Gray Street Partners, the fourth one so far, says it wants to sell all or part of the 32-acre site, the reason is unclear. From the looks of it, neighbors say at least Gray Street Partners has done more than the other developers who never followed through on what they promised. Now they're knocking it down, so I think something's really going to happen now. After three failed attempts over the years, the old Lone Star had become an even worse eyesore and fire hazard until Gray Street Partners bought the property in 2020. Hopefully, says neighbor Raul Lopez, this time it'll be a reality. And not just promises, he says, because as it is, neighbors say they're tired of seeing it sit there. It's going to waste because it's just getting older and older and older, just making the neighborhood look bad. It's an ugly looking thing now. The city last year approved $24 million toward the nearly $600 million project and announcing its plans for restaurants, shops and more at the old brewery. The developer said then the market had changed dramatically over the past decade. You, know, you think about the river extension and the growth uh, in Southtown, not just of the art scene, but of the other multifamily projects and actually the growth of all of San Antonio. As to whether that still holds true for the old Lone Star Brewery, all we have to do is wait. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police releasing very little information today on a body that was found in the parking lot of a west side apartment complex. Police say that they were called out to the 2600 block of Westward Drive near West Military and US 90. At 1147 this morning, there was a body that was found in a parking lot. The department spokesperson speaking to media at the scene did not have much information on how that person may have died if they lived at the complex or even if they were a man or a woman. It's also not unclear if the person had been killed there or if the body had been dumped. That's a question for the homicide detectives to to investigate, and that's what they're doing, working diligently right now to do that and get this case solved. Because anytime there is a body that's just found on the side of an apartment complex, it's suspicious in nature and, and in circumstances. And our homicide detectives are working diligently right now to um, solve this case. The spokesperson said that right now investigators do not have any witnesses. 
So now San Antonio police are hoping that you can help them identify a pair of robbery suspects who they say hit up a convenience store on the southeast side. So pay really close attention because officers say that these two walked into the Five Corner Food Mart in the 3500 block of Gever Street on February 19th. We're told that one of them, you see the one right there on the left, pulled a gun, demanded money, and police say that the other one broke into a coin operating machine and took the money from that. And when they got what they were after, they ran off. So if you can help identify them, police want you to call Crime Stoppers. The number is 210-224-STOP. There is some new information in connection with a deadly crash on the northeast side early yesterday morning. We've now learned the name of the man who was killed. The Bear County mm -hmm. Medical Examiner identifying him as 29-year-old Arturo Sita. The wrong way crash happened along FM 78 near Lakeview Drive at around 2.30 on Thursday morning. The officers say that Sita was driving in the wrong lane when he collided with a woman who was driving in the other direction. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The woman taken to a hospital. She had non-life-threatening injuries. One person hurt in a four-car pileup on northwest side early this morning. San Antonio police say they were first called to the Loop 410 I-10 interchange for this two-car crash. That was around 2.30. But before officers could clear that accident scene, a third car crashed into one of the cars and then a fourth car slammed into the mess a few minutes later. All of this causing some big problems for other drivers that part of the highway had to be shut down so that police could investigate and crews could clear the scene. Now switching gears now, it is official. San Antonio hit a record high today for regular gas. Drivers are paying an average $3.99 per gallon. AAA Texas says that it beats the record from July of 2008 when it was 396. So with prices skyrocketing, RJ Marquez helps you get the most out of your gas. Take a look. San Antonians are paying more for gas than ever before. We saw another three cent jump overnight in the average in San Antonio, which is now at the highest point ever. Now that we've hit a record, what are some ways to stretch your gas dollar? AAA spokesperson Daniel Armbruster says a bad habit many drivers have is something called jackrabbit starts. You can literally lower your fuel economy by 15 to 30 percent at highway speeds and 10 to 40 percent in stop and go traffic uh, just by accelerating too quickly. Another way to lower fuel economy, avoid idling or warming up your car, especially newer models. A car engine consumes one quarter to one half gallon of fuel per hour when idling, uh, but a warm engine only takes around 10 seconds worth of fuel to restart. Another easy tip, drive a bit slower. So reducing highway speeds even by just five to 10 miles per hour can increase your fuel economy by seven to 14 percent. And of course, there are steps you can take to save gas even before you step inside your vehicle. The most important thing is to make sure that your tires are properly inflated. Tires lose about one PSI per month. Having tires with lower pressure can affect your fuel economy. You might also think about joining Costco or Sam's Club to get discounted gas. Their membership costs, but that's often offset by the amount you'll end up saving. Let's say you pay 20 cents less for gas for a full year. Consumer Reports says a normal driver will save more than $100 making up that membership fee. We stopped by this Costco and Sam's Club on the northwest side. Only a five cent difference, but every little penny counts. At this point, no one really knows when this is going to, to reverse course or slow down, but eventually it will. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. We want to take you live now out to the streets, your traffic authority. This is 410 eastbound at Callahan Road, and you can see over on the left hand side at the top of your screen, there's a police cruiser there. They were putting out cones and blocking off traffic. Not sure exactly if there was an accident here, but it looks as though they are trying to clear that scene. An all new Spurs airplane landing this morning at the San Antonio International Airport. It's a first of its kind and part of the Spurs first sponsorship with something called Viva Aerobus. It's also Viva Aerobus's first partnership with a U.S. professional sports team and the first international one for the basketball team. The plane departed from Monterrey, Mexico. It arrived in San Antonio earlier today. I had never been close to the team, but now with like this experience, like maybe a game and this like <laughs> visit and everything, but it's great. It's a great welcoming. Passengers today receiving Spurs branded teddy bears, luggage tags and first flight certificates for the memories.
Oh, the memories. You want to get all nice and cuddly these days because it's 45 degrees right now outside. Cold, and you know what? Here's a live view from our south side cam. It's going to get even colder, Adam. Yeah, temperatures are really plummeting right now because of the cold front that hit earlier today. You know, earlier this morning, before the sun even rose, we were about 60 degrees. Now temperatures have fallen off. I do want to point out, we do have stage one watering restrictions in effect right now. The aquifer down a tenth of a foot, but the key is the 10-day average is below 660. And we're about 10 feet below the March average. And check out this pollen count, mold, oak, ash, juniper, elm, and pine. All reported, but luckily for now, they're on the low end. It's the time of year where oak really starts to ramp up. This evening, windy, north winds, 15 to 25, some higher gusts, temperatures down in the upper 30s by 10 o'clock. We'll talk about how cold and where for tonight. Another freeze tomorrow night and wind temperatures rebound in just a bit. We need to develop disease modifying therapies. These are therapies that'll slow the progression of this basically genetically inherited disorder. It's a battle against the clock for patients with Alzheimer's. The new drug that researchers are testing for patients with early symptoms of the disease. That's next at six. Also news around Texas, two Houston area parents facing charges after deputies say they left four kids home alone last night. The two boys and two girls ranged in age from one to four years old, and three of those kids were found in the street by a couple of teenagers who then told their parents. Now, they called police, who determined that the kids may have been alone for up to two days. The four-year-old told them that they, they thought their mom was dead, but eventually police say they did find the parents in a hotel. Now, the mom is charged with three counts of child endangerment, and a felony violation of bond conditions was filed against the dad. And now the kids are with Child Protective Services. Investigators in Brazos County not releasing a lot of information about a violent scene in a rural neighborhood where three people are dead. One of those was uh, someone with a gun. Deputies say that that man was still alive when they got to the scene, but he refused to follow their commands to drop the gun. So he was eventually shot by a state trooper. Investigators would not say how the other two people were killed or what their relationship to the man with the gun might have been. We'll be right back. Coming up tonight on the Night Beat, residents in Tobin Hill say that nightlife businesses are attracting crime into the neighborhood. How the homeowners and businesses are trying to find a compromise. Plus, March is Kidney Disease Awareness Month, and we're going to hear from a San Antonio mother who suffered from kidney disease before her daughter did something amazing. She donated her own kidney. We're going to have all that and so much more when we see you on the Night Beat. New at 6, if you don't think Alzheimer's is going to affect your future, consider this. Right now, it's the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, and by the year... 2050 experts say that 14 million of us will have it. In two decades of trying, researchers have only found one new drug to get approved to treat it. Today, there's new hope. Cindy Rauchy loves to work out. It keeps her body and her mind healthy. But since her dementia diagnosis six years ago, her husband Frank is around her around the clock. Every day, the simple things get harder. Like 63, four. Five. <laughs> 67. 67. I want to be younger. Rauchi and her family are constantly searching for new therapies that might stop the decline. Rauchi participated in one clinical trial in the past. I could tell that it was helping her. And after this, they closed the study down, they were then, I was then informed probably six months to a year later that she was actually getting the drug. Lately in research, we've been using basically antibody therapies to remove amyloid, to remove tau, and they are showing us some benefit. Neurologist Dr. Paul Winter is now involved in another trial, the Lift Alzheimer's Disease, or Lift Ad clinical trial. Researchers are testing an investigational drug known as ATH-1017, a small injection that patients take at home. The goal? To slow down the effects of Alzheimer's on patients with mild to moderate symptoms. I see the future that we will, depending on the time that we make the diagnosis and the person's disease, we will use different medicines at different times. Right now, the Rauchis are doing everything in their power to keep Cindy's mind active. 
and they hope that scientists will find something that stops the progression before it's too late. I worry that he has a lot on his hands and has to take care of a lot that I don't help with. I worry about that, how it'll be five years from now or three years from now. It's tough. The LIFT AD trial is continuing to enroll patients until October. The closest study location to us is in Austin. Researchers expect the first results from this trial in about one year. And we are sending that couple lots of love. I'm so happy that they were able to share their story with us and hopefully, mm -hmm. you know. All right, so now 616, 45 degrees. Adam, all week long we've been talking about this freeze that we're getting, and it's coming tonight. It's on the way, and I think by around midnight at least in the hill country we'll be at the freezing point, and shortly thereafter in and around town. Now today, 63 degrees the high temperature. That came around 2 a.m. Temperatures have been well below that ever since and partly a result of the cold front. But you look at those temperatures shortly after mid midnight and the warmest we got all across our area was in the 60s. Let's talk about the temperatures right now. Currently we're 45 degrees, but that north wind at 21 miles per hour, giving us a little extra chill in the air, of course, and it's going to stay gusty, I think, through at least midnight tonight. Temperatures by 11 o'clock, 37 degrees, 1 a.m., 34, and then we should hit freezing around 2, 3 a.m. in San Antonio, but even earlier in outlying areas. Let's talk about that and see how cold it's going to get elsewhere. First, a look across the state, colder temperatures to the north, and that wind is coming from the north, so it's pushing in that colder air. Abilene right now at 36, Dallas 39, Lubbock currently 38 degrees. Meanwhile, in and around San Antonio, we're mostly in the mid 40s. Hondo 48, New Braunfels 46, Kerrville currently at 41 degrees. And I know Catula's hanging on to 58, but the wind is out of the north and it's pushing that colder air southward gradually, but steadily. So this is what we're expecting on the map tomorrow morning. There's definitely going to be a chill in the air at 7 a.m. That's typically when we hit our coldest temperature of the day. Uvalde 22, Carrizo Springs 28, Gonzales and Canyon Lake 27. I think downtown San Antonio close to 30 degrees. We get to Holotus 27, Leon Springs 26, and even Elmendorf about 27 tomorrow morning. So we're going to feel the chill, a hard freeze likely in the hill country. And parts of the hill country could actually be at or below freezing for about 10 hours tonight into tomorrow morning. We have another light freeze on Sunday morning, then temperatures are on the upward trend. Afternoons this weekend, near 60 on Saturday, mid 60s on Sunday. So below average, average is lower 70s. But then next week on Monday, we're back to 80 degrees for that afternoon temperature and no freeze anticipated next week. Let's talk about dew points. Of course, that north wind is coming from the dry direction, if you will, that dry northerly breeze. And that's dropped our dew points down into the upper 20s. They'll continue to fall. So if you are susceptible to dry skin or chapped lips, you'll definitely notice it tomorrow and I think even on into Sunday. I mean, tomorrow dew points near 10 degrees and they'll be like that into Sunday morning, then rise a little bit, but we're not gonna have any mugginess in the air. You're not gonna feel any mugginess for the foreseeable future, but unfortunately, we need that mugginess to make some much needed rain. Let's talk about our weather pattern. Here's the big picture. Earlier today, with the cold front, a few sprinkles, very light showers here and there, just dotting the landscape, a trace of rain in a few spots. That's about it. A few you know, drips on the windshield. Most of the action in terms of the real moisture was farther to the north of us, moving through portions of North Texas and especially into Arkansas, and now even stretching up the Ohio River Valley, moving into the Mid-Atlantic and the East Coast. It's all ahead of this big dip in the upper level flow that helps generate that precipitation and the lift needed for it. We're going to see a few more disturbances in the days ahead. Basically, the next seven days, we'll have a few more little disturbances slide overhead. But unfortunately, they're not going to be the type to make any rain for us around here. So our sunny and dry stretch continues. I wish we could have a good chance of rain. It's just not in the cards right now. Tomorrow morning, widespread 20s. Cold to start the day, then by the afternoon, right near 60 degrees. I think we'll make it into the lower 60s south of town. But in the hill country tomorrow, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, only about 57 for the high temperature, so unseasonably cool, not just tomorrow, but even on Sunday after that brief light morning freeze at 32 we will be in the mid 60s, a bit of a southerly wind at 10 to 20 in the afternoon. You'll notice that and then by Monday back to 80 degrees. It looks like we'll be in the 70s and 80s pretty much all next week. All right, Adam, thank you.
All right, so let's talk about what's going on. You know, the state tournament is going on with the basketball team, and it was a tough loss for one team. I just got back from the Alamo Dome, and I'm serious. It looked like Bernie had this in the bag. They were up by 10 in the second half. Devin Stiles was rolling, and they just let it slip away. When we come back, we'll show you what happened with the Greyhounds in the Alamo Dome, plus another shot, the huge milestone for Greg Popovich and the Spurs tonight. We'll check in with Greg Simmons at the AT&T Center next. Tonight, our San Antonio Spurs have a chance to break out of a slump that has lasted since the tail end of the rodeo road trip. In fact, San Antonio has only won one of their last six games. Three of those five losses were decided by six points or less, but they still have another chance to push Coach Pop to NBA greatness. With more, let's take you to the AT&T Center right now where our Greg Simmons is standing by live. Hey, Greg. Hey there. You know, thank you, Andrew. I'll tell you what. It's because it's going to be a little bit more difficult tonight when you consider the fact the Spurs are playing host of the Utah Jazz. Now, the Jazz right now are in fourth playoff position, and at the same time, they've won seven out of their last ten games while the Spurs are in 12. Two games behind the Pelicans, who hold the 10th and final play-in position, which is 16 games left. Still, it's another opportunity to make Pop the all-time winningest coach in NBA history. Can't wait to get it for him. I know he's, he's, he's real humble about it, but... It will be something, you know, when we get it, we have to celebrate it that day and, uh, you know, let him feel that love. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I know he don't play for that uh, or coach for that, I should say, but it's, it's an important milestone. All right, and this fan is more than ready for history to be made tonight. We'll know tonight by the night beat. Live from the AT&T Center, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. That is awesome. All right, thank you, Greg. The Bernie boys return to the state semifinals for the second straight season, but unlike last year, they're actually taking the court at the Alamo Dome against Wichita Falls Hershey in the Class 4A state semifinals. And what a start for the Greyhounds. Let's pick up the highlights right now. Devin Stiles muscles his way to the basket and gets it to fall. Count it and one. He'd score 11 of Bernie's first 13 points. They lead 13 to 11 after one. Early in the second, this time Stiles comes up with a steal and turns defense to offense, finding Preston Thompson ahead for the lay-in and a five-point lead. Then a little later, Barrett Pape knocks down a triple and the Greyhounds lead 27-22 at halftime. Styles continues to dominate throughout the second half. He draws contact here and gets it the fall plus the foul. Styles with a game high 23 points. Hershey does come from behind though to force overtime tied at 52 and they pull away late in the extra frame and Bernie ends up falling in the state semifinals. 63 to 57 is the final. Everybody kind of had their depth perception off because we're so used to it's just a little wall behind us. So everybody was kind of leaving it short, short arming it. And I mean, we finally started hitting late and then just came up a little bit short in the game. It was a great experience, you know. Last year it was in Houston. It was about three and a half hours away. This year it was 30 minutes. So it was great to have all our fans here, the whole community here, and to support us. Bernie finished with an impressive 32 and 7 overall record. Congrats on a great season, guys. Tomorrow morning, the Cole Boys basketball team has a date with Destiny. After defeating Hiscock in the state semifinals on Thursday afternoon, the Cougars will square off against Dallas Madison with the Class 3A title on the line. Now, these two programs have history. They're the most recent 3A champions, with the Trojans winning it back in 2019 and the Cougars taking the crown last year. Cole faced Dallas Madison this year already and lost in the regular season 60 to 49. Will that experience help them? Definitely help us a lot, you know, seeing a team uh, earlier in the season before you play them again. Definitely helps. You saw uh, last year we played London earlier in the season and we played them next um, in the regional semifinals. So it's definitely going to help a lot. We know what their guys can do and we're going to come out and try to uh, have a great game plan. I think they were a tough team, but I feel like at the beginning of the season we were kind of a newer team and we were still finding our roles for different guys. And I feel like it's going to be a tougher game come Saturday. So here is the matchup for tomorrow. It'll be the Cougars against Dallas Madison for the Class 3A title at 10 a.m. in the Dome. That should be a good one. Pack it. Cheer for, cheer for the Cougars. Let's get them through over the hump. All right. Good stuff. Thank you, Andrew. You got it. We'll be right back. Yeah, still to come, you're going to get ready to spring forward this weekend. So we're going to discuss how the time can affect your body and what you can do to keep that from happening. And Russia changing tactics in its attempt to put the United States in a bad light. What Moscow is accusing the Biden administration of doing in Ukraine. Next at 6.
Russia's military advances in Ukraine are moving west now, with several major cities becoming the target. The U.N. Security Council met to discuss Russia claiming U.S. biochemical labs in Ukraine. And as Chris Wynn reports, it's happening as President Joe Biden calls for suspending normal trade relations with Russia and also bans its imports of vodka and seafood. For the first time, Russian forces are expanding their attacks in Ukraine to the western part of the country. This as fighting intensifies closer to Kyiv, the capital city, and the humanitarian crisis becomes increasingly dire and desperate. I'm leaving now. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky hitting back at widely discredited Russian disinformation, suggesting that his country is preparing a chemical attack. Have you decided to carry out de-chemicalization of Ukraine using ammonia? Using phosphorus? What else have you prepared for us? Where will you strike with chemical weapons? The United Nations meeting Friday at the request of Moscow about its false claim the United States is developing chemical weapons in Ukraine. We're not going to let Russia get away with lying to the world or staining the integrity of the Security Council by using this forum as a venue for legitimizing Putin's violence. Also Friday, we're showing our strength and we will not falter. President Joe Biden called for suspending normal trade relations with Russia and said the U.S. would ban imports of seafood, vodka and diamonds from the nation as part of an overall effort to ramp up economic pressure. The measure requires an act of Congress. We're going to hit Putin harder because the United States and our closest allies and partners are acting in unison. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. In news around America, Donald Trump's request to counter sue magazine columnist E. Jean Carroll for violating New York's law against frivolous defamation lawsuits was denied by a judge. Her defamation case still on hold, both sides waiting for a decision from an appeals court on whether the lawsuit could proceed. Carroll sued Trump for defamation back in 2019 in state court. It came after he denied her claim that he had raped her in the mid-1990s. He said she wasn't his type and accused her of making it up to boost sales of her book. Trump had asked the judge for permission to use the state's anti-slap law as a defense. SLAP stands for Strategic Lawsuit Against Public Participation. The judge called Trump's legal argument futile and a delay tactic. So a lot of Hispanics, Native Americans, and blacks weren't counted during the 2020 census, and that admission came directly from the U.S. Census Bureau. While the census generally overcounts whites and undercounts minorities, the Bureau, the Bureau is reporting that discrepancies were a lot higher now than they were in 2010. The nation's Latino population was underrepresented at a level more than three times that of the last census. The racial estimates are based on the Bureau's post-census survey, which is a follow-up that's used to check its overall accuracy. Census Bureau managers explain that the 2020 count had a lot of challenges because of the pandemic, hurricanes and wildfires. And also it blamed the Trump administration for its efforts to add a citizenship question because they claim it may have discouraged thousands of undocumented immigrants from being counted. This is the weekend. As far as time changes go, the one coming up this weekend is probably the most popular one. Springing forward gives us back that extra daylight of the evening that we've been missing, but it also can throw off your sleep. Mandy Gaither shows us there's a reason for that. It's that time of year again, and if springing forward takes a little pep out of your step, you're not alone. The inside clock, the clock inside our brain that regulates sleep and wakefulness is typically a very reliable periodic uh, process. And having just one hour shift can actually affect us pretty significantly. Dr. Nancy Fulvery is a sleep specialist at Cleveland Clinic. She says the time change can affect your body, making you more vulnerable to stroke or heart attacks. Being sleepy can also cause you to be less alert when driving. All of us have our own vulnerability to circadian rhythm changes. Uh, and some of us can manage in uh, very difficult situations when our sleep structure changes and adapt well and others 
a canal. To help your body adapt, Fulvery says to plan ahead. Make sure your body is getting the rest it needs every day. And make sure you don't put anything into your body that might mess with your sleep. Drinking alcohol or caffeine before bed or eating a big meal late at night may make you miss out on those Z's. We all know how much sleep we need. If your sleep troubles last longer than a couple of months, it's time to see a doctor. I'm Mandy Gaither. It's one of the last pieces of memorabilia from The Wizard and some lucky collectors gonna get to own it as long as their pockets are deep enough. The opening bid for the Tin Man's oil can still to come. Also, as we get closer to tax day, yes, I can hear the groans. We are already getting warnings to prepare for possible delays in getting those refunds. So we're gonna discuss what you can do before to make sure that you can avoid that as much as possible. That's next at six. All right, let's talk about this. April 18th, you have until then to file your federal taxes. And if you haven't done so yet, you may have to wait a little bit longer this year to get a refund. Sorry. ABC's Morgan Norwood tells us what's causing those delays and also what you can do about them. The deadline for filing your taxes is just a few weeks away. And just like last year, taxpayers can expect more delays from the IRS this year. Believe it or not, the IRS is still working to file and process last year's returns. So they've got work from last year, as well as the new work for the 2021 tax season. There's also some labor shortages that they've had to work through due to COVID. So all of that is leading up to potential delays. So to speed up the process of getting your taxes done, there are some things that you can do. The number one tip is to file electronically. If you're still putting your return in an envelope, licking a stamp and sticking it in the mail, I'm sorry to tell you that your return probably will take an extra six to eight weeks. Another way to save time is to avoid making some of the most common mistakes, misspelling your name, entering an incorrect social security number, not including all your tax documents, and not signing your return. If you need help from the IRS, go online. Very important, don't try calling the IRS. They do have phone numbers, but I can tell you from experience, you're gonna be on hold for a long time and they're not as helpful, honestly, as you may think. And if you're getting a refund? The fastest way to get that money then is to make sure you have an online bank account set up so that the IRS can directly transfer your refund to that bank account. And just keep in mind that sometimes it takes about five days for the money to show up in your bank account. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. Just did the math, by the way, five weeks and two days. That's how much time you have left to file your federal taxes. So just letting you know that. Plenty of time. And look at that. The sun came out this afternoon. Still quite chilly, though. Yeah, it was too little too late for us. And with that cold north wind, that sun really didn't help us out temperature wise. We'll get into those temperature, temperature details in a moment. I do want to point out that there is a space station flyover early tomorrow morning for you early risers. I mean, we're talking 536 AM tomorrow morning. It's going to last for five minutes, maximum height 64 degrees, appearing out of the north northwest and then disappearing to the southeast. So those of you up very early tomorrow morning, 536 AM. It's going to be chilly at that time. We'll tell you how cold and where and even another freeze on the way in just a bit. I just thought of something. What? This time on Monday, we'll have another hour of sunlight. So this we won't, is true. we will not be sunsetting at this hour. Yeah, and the sunset will be an hour later than what mm -hmm. it is right now. And right now it's before 7 p.m. of Fitzy, 6.40 p.m. is sunset. So by Monday, it'll be about 7.45 p.m. All right, let's talk about our weather headlines. Freeze tonight and Saturday night. Less wind tomorrow. The wind's going to finally pump the brakes by sunrise tomorrow. And overall, an unseasonably cool weekend. But if you don't like this, by Monday, we'll be back up to 80 degrees. All right, let's get right to this. This is important when you look at our time lapse, the cloud cover and how the clouds are retreating. And now they're retreating pretty quickly. Keep in mind that the clouds at night act as a blanket. When we don't have them, 
well, that we don't have the blanket and we cool off uh, more efficiently. So 45 right now, north wind at 21, pushing the cold air into place. Still some gusts up to 36 miles per hour. That clearing line is quickly pushing eastward and moved through downtown San Antonio about 5 p.m. That's when we saw the clearing at 435 p.m. And it's going to continue to move southeastward. We'll be clearing out throughout the coastal plain through the night. And again, that's ripping that blanket off of us. So temperatures falling well, pretty quickly and drastically for this time of year. Right now, Castroville, you're 46, Bulverde 42, 41 in Bandera, still 54 in Del Rio and 58 in Catula, but widespread 20s tomorrow morning. This is the forecast. This is what we're expecting. Uvalde about 22, 24 in Hondo, even Beeville, 29 degrees, Catula, 27. We all have to take the necessary precautions, particularly with plants and pets this go around. And in the hill country, some of those rural and exposed where you have the exposed pipes in the rural areas. Yeah, even then some necessary precautions with your pipes as you can be below freezing for about 10 hours. So Converse tomorrow, 28 in the morning, Lake Hills, 27. You get the idea. We're going to be feeling the chill. Then a brief light freeze on Sunday morning, right around 32. By Monday morning, everything changes. We're back to near 50 degrees for the morning low, and that's actually pretty much average for this time of year. Now, the average last freeze is February 24th in San Antonio. The Hill Country, though, the average last freeze of the season is late March. I mean, Kerrville, March 28th, so this isn't abnormal for the Hill Country. And keep in mind, here in San Antonio, the latest freeze on record occurred on April 3rd back in 1987. So yeah, this is later than usual, but it's not really unheard of to have a freeze this time of year. All right, let's talk about the winds. It gives us that extra chill in the air right now. Wind gusts up to 36 miles per hour locally, even Hondo as well. I mean, we're seeing those winds between 25 and 40 miles per hour at times out of the north. That's that cold, dry direction of the wind, and it's going to stay that way, I think, through at least midnight and then start to taper off tomorrow morning and by sunrise tomorrow you won't even notice the wind. So when we're at the coldest part of our day, those temperatures down in the 20s, at least the wind will have subsided and we're not gonna have much of a wind chill to start the day tomorrow. Dew points down in the 20s to near 30 degrees and they're falling and actually they're going to be even lower throughout this weekend with dew points at, at dew points at times right near 10 degrees. So if you're susceptible to dry skin or chapped lips, this is going to be one of those wintry weekends where you feel that dry air. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, it takes that moisture in the air to help make rainfall. We didn't squeeze much moisture out of the clouds today. I mean, we had a few light spritzes and sprinkles, a trace here and there. Not a big deal. Insignificant, of course. Just another, another day starting with the clouds and not much to show for them. Most of the moisture was far to the north of us and now uh, basically parts of the Mid-South and up in the Ohio River Valley. But we really just couldn't get much moisture out of this dip in the upper level flow and the uh, cold front that moved through. We could use it not only here, but the entire Lone Star State. I mean, we've got nearly 90% of Texas considered in drought right now. Of course, the drought monitor updated every Thursday in this red area from Eagle Pass to Catula to about Bigfoot Divine area that continues to spread closer to San Antonio. So tomorrow, sunny, cold in the morning, some 20s and then near 60 in the afternoon, a little bit warmer on Sunday, mid 60s. And then by next week on Monday, 80 and most of next week, 70s to near 80. Oh, it was so much nicer. Thank Indeed. you, Adam. You just have to get through this weekend. Thank you, Adam. In case you missed it, it's coming up next. There's so much that happened today. We're going to get you caught up now with today's In Case You Missed It. It involved four cars and it shut down a busy highway flyover. Here's a look at the scene earlier this morning. Based on what officers told us, it doesn't appear there were any major injuries. However, they say one of the drivers in the initial crash did suffer some broken bones. San Antonio police were called out here to the Westwood Plaza apartments and townhomes for a body found in the parking lot. Now police are treating this as a homicide investigation, but beyond that, they're not releasing many details.
Speaking with media at the scene, a police department spokesman did not know if the victim had lived at the apartment complex, how they may have died, or even if they were a man or a woman. Our fighters responding to this fire this afternoon in the 8600 block of Bristlecone Drive. Firefighters tell us that winds were a problem in this case, and they helped those flames to spread from the attic to the rest of the house really quickly. We're told two people and two pets got out safely. As for the house itself, firefighters don't think it's salvageable. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. Two people are behind bars after fleeing a traffic stop and then crashing on the highway yesterday. You're looking at 29-year-old Mark Monreal and 26-year-old Jessica Suarez. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say that they tried to pull them over on Pleasanton Road yesterday, but they didn't stop. Instead, deputies say that they drove to I-35 and Highway 90 where they lost control and flipped over the guardrail. You can see what happened right there. They tried to run off, but they didn't get far. Deputies say that when they searched their vehicle, they found meth, marijuana, and three weapons. And now each of them faces several charges. Check this out tomorrow morning, widespread 20s. So yeah, a freeze a little later than usual, but we're going to get this and then again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night, another freeze, but not quite as cold. And by the afternoon, only near 60 degrees. So that's about 13 degrees below average for this time of year and staying in the 50s in parts of the hill country. Sunday morning, right near freezing to start. And remember, we have to spring forward one hour Saturday night before you go to bed. Also, it's advised you change the batteries in your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Yeah. Every time we time change mid 60s on Sunday, then next week we're in the 70s to right near 80 starting on Monday. We just have to get through the weekend. Yes, we do. All right. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you on the night. Have a good night, everyone.